Let us pray. Father, it's your word to us, your children, and your church, as Peter called the body of Christ. Open our mind's eyes and the understanding of our hearts, and help us to see and to understand your word. We pray this in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. I'm reading from the Good News Bible, today's English version. And I actually would want us to take our Bibles also out if we have our Bibles. And then we just see, it's, I know it's different translations. And as we hold up our Bibles, John 14. I want to say to ourselves, this is my Bible. I'm what, I say, what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless us. God bless us. In my Bible, the reading that the heading is Jesus the way to the Father. Do not be worried and upset. Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house, and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come, and I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know the way you are going. So how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we need, Jesus answered. For a long time I have been with you, with you all. Yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask for in my name, so that the Father is glory, Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord, may it bless it our hearts. For his name's sake. Amen. Thanks be to God. People may be seated. Father, may the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh God. Pray this in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. As you see, the sermon uh, theme is re the recurrent word, suffering. 
as the children read for us or the girl read for us in 1 Peter 2, 2 to 12. There are some principles of growth. For new, growing, and maybe old Christians like me. I don't know about you, but every time when I read the, the Bible, we really with the intensity to hear what God said. There's always something new. Feeding on the word is daily nutrition. If we fall in love with God so much that the word become for us our breakfast or our meal, then we will know that what Peter was saying from the start of this two, in first bit, Peter 2. A healthy baby is a healthy appetite. If we are truly, if we are truly being born of the Spirit of God, we will have a healthy appetite. The Bible tells us, as newborn babies, we have to desire the sincere milk of the Word. And I think that's why we come to church. We read our Bibles and sometimes there are some things that is not so clear to us. And when we come to church, we always hear, even if it's just, even if it's just one word, but for me there's always something new that I can pick up and go home and chew and even look up for myself in the Bibles. And that's why I would, I would really ask and urge you to bring your Bible and make notes and see whether the minister is not maybe or who else is speaking if it's a, a preacher he's not maybe saying something that is not in your bible because even though the translations are a little bit different but the word of god remains the same feed yourself daily without fail job said i have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job 21, 23, 12. The more you eat, the quicker you will grow. Maybe more for young, for young Christians. But even for older Christians, you can find out the more you eat, because when you are growing older, maybe you have more time on hand. When you retire, sometimes you have worked very hard, you might find a lot of time on hand then you must really esteem the words of the mouth of God. The more you eat, the quicker you will grow, and the less bruising we will have. Speed up the process and save yourself some, time, some pain. Vow to read God's word every day without failing. Say to yourself, no Bible, no breakfast. No read, no feet. Be like Job and put your Bible before your belly. Can we remember a story in the Bible that maybe somebody lost his inheritance or blessings because he put his, he put his belly before the word of God? He is so in Jacob, isn't it? He so was more anxious to fill his belly and he actually lost the blessing of God. Okay, we know that Jacob doesn't have a, a very good name in the Bible according to us. But on the other hand, I, I was just thinking last time I was reading through my notes again. On the other hand, Jacob did not want to do the, the wrong thing from the beginning. His, mother's, his mother was pushing him and telling him what to do. So he's not all alone. The only guilty one. If you and I do that, God promises that we will be like a fruitful, strong, and healthy tree. Psalm 1. You can read it for yourself. Each day, find somewhere a quiet place and thoroughly soak your soul in the Word of God. There may be times when we read through its pages with great enthusiasm, 
and other times it seems dry and even boring. But food is your body, whether you enjoy it or not. Do you believe that? When you are hungry, you will, over, you will even enjoy a dry piece of bread. Because it, it feeds your body, it profits your body. Therefore, as a child, you do not doubt. There's no doubt eating deserts, desserts with, with great intuition. Perhaps vegetables weren't so exciting. If you were a normal child, you probably had to be encouraged to eat them. Not all of us, our children, like veggies at first, but then as you matured in life, you were taught to discipline yourself to eat vegetables. Because the, it benefits you, physically even, though they may not bring pleasure to your taste buds. Some other principles of growth, Matthew 6 and 9. Our Lord pray. Our Father who art in heaven. God is the ruler of the world. He is the one watching and looking after us. And we need to, to be constantly reminded who he is and who we are. First Peter 2 and 2 Had the doctrines of Jesus been preaching always as pure as they come from his lips? This is now from I'm not sure, maybe some people who are more convert, conversion of this, who was uh, Thomas Jefferson. He was once an American president, isn't it? Many years ago. Thank you, sir. I was not sure. I thought <laughs> I, I, I must have forget because of the gray hair. He said, had the doctrine of Jesus been preaching always as pure as they came from Jesus' lips? The whole civilized world would now have been Christians. For me, it means maybe if we were doing exactly as the Word of God told us, and not maybe sometimes reasoning in our own thoughts, and do it as Jesus said. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If I would love my neighbor as I love myself, I will never hurt my neighbor. I will never be a tell a lie to my neighbor because I hate to be lied to. I will never steal from my neighbor because we all know how it feels when you know this precious thing or even if your house has been breaking in. What are we doing if our houses are breaking in? We quickly look in the directory, the nearest send a police number or, or a police number so that we can phone the police to come and see whether they can help us about this robbery. But the Bible also somewhere tells us if we are not doing the instructions of the word of God, then we are robbing ourselves from blessings and we are robbing God. And there's one scripture that's haunting me. And maybe I need also to tell you so that you can also be haunted. Hmm? Then we are more that feel that maybe we need to look into it for ourselves. That is um, Malachi 3 10. Bring the whole tithe to the house of the Lord so that there can be food in his house. And then he goes further and he said, you say you, yes, yes to me, but actually we are robbers and thieves if we are not doing it. They tell me to test me in this, he says, the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Wow. Wouldn't we be rich Christians? We would overwhelm the world with what we have if we could just take God's word 
So many a time we sing, trust and obey, there is no other way. If you just trust and obey. But I found myself that maybe unbelief is the biggest sin of us Christians. I think in that same chapter it goes further and say, you say you are not robbing me, but you robbing you are robbing me from tithes and offerings. Perhaps as Peter go further in verse seven. Perhaps the number number one fruit of salvation will be that Jesus will become precious to every believer. You can read in 1 Corinthians 16, 16, 22. If any man loves not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be an anathema maranatha. I was trying to look up this word, but unfortunately, if there's maybe a Greek scholar or a Hebrew scholar, somebody can maybe just give us this word. Or somebody, if somebody can put it up for us, 1 Corinthians 16, 22, then maybe we can just see whether this, this text is the same as it is in my Bible. I will also try to see whether I can get it quickly. Grace is love that cares and stoops and rescues. This is said by John R. W. Stott. Anyone get it? First Corinthians, chapter 16. 22. If anyone does not love the Lord, let that person be cursed. Come, Lord Jesus God. So that is maybe what that word means. Anathema Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus God. So today the challenge is for us. I, I read a um, commentary that was written by somebody else in, from Acts 4, verse 12. Even if we read, it has been taken from the scripture that we read, Acts 7. We see what happened to Stephen. Because Stephen was full of the Spirit of God, and Stephen was a holy man. Stephen was stoned by the people who did not believe, and even maybe by the ones who were part of the team of, 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 of Paul. At that time he was Saul. So, so he, as, as the people stoned Stephen, his, Stephen's clothes were, were at Saul's feet. It was before his conversion. And sometimes we think that if we are going, if we are choosing to be a Christian, it is an easy road. Christianity is not a bed of roses. We see it here in scripture. But maybe in our time, in the age that we are living, we think that if we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it will be a bed of roses. But it is not a bed of roses. Because we can see in the records what happened to Stephen. Somebody was preaching, apparently, this, uh, they say that uh, television evangelist 2008, and he was, making a, he was making an example and say, look about the Jews that was killed by, by Hitler in the Holocaust. He said, he told his audience that all those people went to heaven. Does it then mean that Jesus only died? for those that has been murdered or has been killed in such a goodly way. What about the gypsies who were Gentiles, who were also apparently part of that Holocaust? Wouldn't they also have been, uh, because of the suffering, just go there? No. In John 14, 1 and 14, we are told that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. So it does not mean that maybe something bad happened to us and we died in that situation or is even it's in a motor accident that we are automatically 
been accepted into heaven. There is no other way. The only way is Jesus. Faith in God clears the muddy waters of fear. The Christian who has confidence in Jesus Christ knows that his or her eternal footsteps has been ordered by the Lord. Amen. And that there is a mansion prepared for them. That even goes beyond, beyond the wildest imagination. If these were, weren't so, Jesus would have told us. He said in scripture, if these things were not like that, he would have told us. The word tells us that he's not a liar. His words is yes and amen. His word is sure and steadfast, a mourning for the soul. And those who come into harbor of a calm faith in God have perfect peace in the troubled storms of this world. Today, maybe just something that I want to leave I should have told you before. Uh, the people called the Reobothers are today celebrating or are today going into uh, the feast of, of some Kubis, they, they call it. They have today celebrating their feast because tomorrow they will go out and celebrate some Kubis. And those people were, a lot of people of our ancestors were also killed in that war. And they died just like on 4th of May, uh, that was a holiday uh, we celebrated or the country celebrated, Kasinga Day. So it does not mean that those people who were killed and died in such brutal ways just enter heaven of suffering was now a way of entering heaven. And even if, we, even if we look to Jesus himself, Jesus was crucified, but he was the only person, he is God's son. And he said he is the way. And he is the only person through whom we can really enter into heaven. Questions and objections. It is intolerant to say that Jesus is the only way to God. Some questions. Jesus is the one who said that he is the way to the Father. For Christians who say that there are other ways to find peace with God is to hear false testimonies. In a sweeping statement, Jesus discard all other religions as a means of finding forgiveness of sin. This agrees with other scriptures. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men, men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4 and 12. And for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. Jesus' unique words we find in chapter 14, John verse 6. But Paige Patterson, Paige Patterson stated, it comes down to a question of doubt. Every false religious expression is a religion of darkness. That doesn't mean there are no good things in that faith. But if Jesus is to be taken seriously when he said, no one comes to the Father but through me, every other proposal is one of darkness. See John 14 and 21. Jesus' unique words, Jesus promised that he and the Father will reveal themselves to all who love and obey him. This is the ultimate challenge to any skeptic. John 17 and 5. Jesus' other unique words is Jesus declared that he was with the Father before the world came into existence and that the Father loved him before the foundation of the world. Myself and Reverend Van Roy Bowman attended a prayer meeting in Simonstadt, 2005. And as we were researching in some hall, they show us a film. The American uh, NASA, they went through orbit and outside the atmosphere, they apparently placed a camera years ago there. And that camera, 
pick up a picture in one of the planets where the, I don't know whether it's Siliot, but you say the English is Siliot, Siliot of Jesus was a portrait of Jesus in one of the planets was shown. Where he stand out with his stretch out hands, the crown on his head, and he was crucified. That was the first time that I heard it like that. And it is in, uh, is it now Romans or Revelation? I'm now not sure. Let us quickly check maybe Romans. I will, I will be finished now, now. Romans 13, ah, yeah, Romans 13, 8. Or Romans 8, 13. It stands, it says there that Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. And that film of NASA, except the continuum that we have on the maybe there is, okay, it might be then another version of, of, of what. But I will, I will look it up. I will look it up and, 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 and really, yeah. That was really, that was, for me, it was in a revelation. All people living on earth will worship it, except those whose names were written before the creation of the world in the book of the Lamb, which belongs to the Lamb that was killed. It's Revelation 13. Revelation 13, right. So there it stated that even in the planet, there is something who stated that Jesus was crucified before the foundation. He prepared that for us. And then we had then an obligation to accept him as our Lord and Savior. Because there is no other way. He is the only way. Jesus was God in human form. John 1.1 1, 1 says he existed before the creation. John 1.1 1, 1 and 3. John 14, 10, Jesus was in human form. John 17, 22. And the glory which you, which you gave me, I have given them. That's Jesus directly. That they may be one, even as we are one. John 14 and 14, in 1 Kings 3 and 5, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and asked, What shall I give you? God asked us also that question. Today, maybe you will ask us to be like Solomon and ask for wisdom. God promises to give it liberally. James 1 and 5, he who gets wisdom loves his own soul. Proverbs 9 and 19 and 8. If we have wisdom, we will think right, do right, and speak right. Remember, he who wins souls is wise. Proverbs 11 and 13. How do we, how do we do the day? As it is written. Ask and it will be given unto you. Knock and the door will be opened. Seek and you will find, as it says in Matthew 7. Is it not maybe because the Bible is like a mirror? When we read the Bible and we read it really, to understand it actually leads us we see our own sinfulness we see ourselves in the Bible and maybe today I want to leave you with this challenge that as we already converse on that that we will first in the morning early in the morning make time before food, eat the word. Soak yourself in scripture. No word, no food. First the word, and then our belly. We live in a time, in a very exciting time. I'm sure we know, if we look to the world events, that we are all clear that life cannot just go on. As is. There are wars, there are rumors of wars, there are diverse 
companies, uh, nations that are in turmoil. It is earthquakes here and earthquakes there. It's floods here and floods there. It's rumors of wars. People are fleeing from their countries because of war. And it's more intense than it was before. So for me, it shows me that we have to, to see what does Jesus want us to do in such a time as this. We must think honestly and seriously about how are we, how, 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 how is our relationship with Jesus? Do we really have such a personal relationship with Jesus that we, that he becomes precious to us? So precious that we really seek after him. John 14 verse 15 says, if we show our love for God by our obedience, if we do not obey, we do not love, truly love him. And those are sobering questions. I don't know maybe because that now that I'm retired and now I maybe have more time on hand to, to more take the word as it come to me, that it's only me that is now having this, this urge that maybe go into scripture as John Wesley said, the founder of the Methodist Church, that scriptural holiness will be the one. If we can guide our life according to scripture as individuals, we might see more of God's revelation and God's revelation might help us more to, to obey and trust his word. It is written in scripture That we call him Lord, Lord, but we do not, we do not do what he says. Matthew 7, 24. The challenge for me today is that if we suffer, let us not think that is a way to heaven. Let us, let us look into the Bible what people who really suffered what they did. Because of, uh, we read of, 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 of Stephen, before, maybe it was before the crucifixion of Jesus, I don't know, but when Stephen was dying there at Paul's hand, he was also praying the same prayer that Jesus prayed, Father forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. We are living in a world of today, in the world today, that is maybe becoming more Hush to the because of the things that is happening and maybe this will be our only way out to if need be we have to feed on the word and it will be our nutrition to be like little babies want meat because we want to grow let it be our desire May God bless us and may God help us that we will truly fall in love with this word, the way, the truth, and the life. So that we can be where Jesus is and we can come back to him in a world that there would be no suffering, no pain, no death, no fearing for our lives. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is truth. And what you tell us, we can take you on your word. You are no man. Scripture is telling us in numbers. You are no man that you will ever tell a lie to us. You are God. You are our creator. Our birth belongs to you. And if you take life away from us, we will be no more. Thank you for your loving kindness. 
Thank you for caring for us so much that you always come back to us, begging us, speaking to us, making us look in, into your word, seeing our own faces in your word as a mirror. Help us to put our own hands in our own bosoms, not to look to our brothers and our sisters, but it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need. We thank you, Father. Will you please, Holy, Holy Spirit, will you, will you be the preacher explaining your word in each and every one of our hearts and make us understand the way you want us to understand it. I pray this in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen.